Hello viewers, welcome to my Bronte collection video, plus a review of the biography of the Brontes by Juliet Barker. I'm going to kind of lead you through my collection via a timeline of my relationship to the Brontes, and it starts off with Wuthering Heights. In my junior year of high school, I decided to join Advanced Placement English, and I joined a little later, so I did not realize that there was an assignment where we had to read a book from a list of approved selections during the summer. But luckily, that summer, I just happened to have read Wuthering Heights on my own choice, and that was on the list. And the reason why I had decided to read Wuthering Heights was because I saw the amazing MTV <laughs> adaptation of Wuthering Heights. I'm laughing because it's probably pretty terrible, but my teenage heart loved it so much. And it's basically a modernization, and as most adaptations do, it cuts out the entire second half of the plot. So you can imagine that when I started to read Wuthering Heights, I was very confused because although I knew it took place a couple hundred years ago, I had no idea who the narrator was. And if you know Wuthering Heights, you know that the narrative structure is completely crazy, basically. So what I did was look at spark notes or something to kind of put myself in context of how the book started, who was talking, and who the various characters were and their relations to each other. And I no longer own the original copy of Wuthering Heights that I had. It was a very cheap copy from Walmart that I came across, so I have since gotten rid of it. However, I did purchase this paperback copy by Penguin Classics so that I could essentially be a little more rough with it. And I did end up highlighting a couple random things while I was researching for one of the many papers I wrote about the Brontes during senior year of high school as well as college. I read Jane Eyre probably on my own as well, and then in senior year of high school I wrote an essay about Emily and Charlotte Bronte and their books and the influence of their childhood on their books, so I reread both of them for that. And then in college I took a poetry seminar and for that class we had to buy our own poetry books as our textbooks. One of the books I bought was the Everyman's Library Pocket Poets edition of Emily Bronte's work. It just says Bronte on the front, but it is only Emily Bronte's poems, as we eventually see on the title page. And in my poetry seminar I wrote an article about Emily's poetry and how it connects to Wuthering Heights, and there really wasn't much to go on because there's not much left of Emily's writings. There is a lot more of Charlotte's, and Charlotte of course went on to publish several books, and I don't own all of those. There's one that I'm missing, but I do have Villette, which I have not yet read. And this was the third and last book that she completed. I also have Shirley, which was the second book that she published, and I have not read this one either. I do have a copy of Jane Eyre, but that is coming up later. And of Anne Bronte's works, the only one I have read is Agnes Grey, and I don't really remember a lot from it, so I definitely want to reread this one. And I have this copy of The Juvenilia of Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte, which I mentioned in my Jane Austen collection video, and I don't think I've read this. Maybe some of the Jane Austen, but I don't think I've read any of the Charlotte Bronte. I have read some of her early writings, and that was a book I got through an interlibrary loan earlier this year or late last year. And as for Jane Eyre, this is the first edition of 
the slightly fancier editions I own of the Bronte's works. I haven't read through this copy and I used to have a mass market paperback edition of Jane Eyre that I had a ton of post-it notes with notes scribbled on them from when I reread it in high school, but this is a nice, clean, beautiful edition that I'm sure I will be reading soon. And I have this edition of Wuthering Heights, which was in a semi-recent video, probably from about almost a year ago, actually. Time has gone so quickly. But I got this at Barnes & Noble with a gift card that my coworkers at my last job gave me on my last day of work. And I haven't read this copy, but I'm definitely looking forward to it because it is a gorgeous and purple. Still no regrets. I also have the annotated Wuthering Heights. In my Austin collection, you saw the annotated Pride and Prejudice. And like that edition, I have also not read this edition, but I definitely want to. So maybe I'll read this one when I reread Wuthering Heights next year. But if you didn't see the Jane Austen collection, essentially it has the text of the book and then on the edges it has annotations and it also has pictures in the text as well. Anne Bronte's only other published work was The Tenant of Wildfell or Wildfell Hall and I do own a copy of it and this I got at the same time that I got my vintage editions of Jane Austen and this one has an inscription to... I can't make out the name honestly. With Jim's Love, April 1920. So it was published at least that long ago. Here are the adorable little first illustrated pages and it says it's published by London and Glasgow Collins Clear Type Press and I am hoping to own a more recent edition of Tenant of Wildfell Hall so that I can be a little more rough with that one. As for vintage editions of Wuthering Heights, I really have been unsuccessful in finding beautiful copies. There are vintage editions, but none of them are really in the style that I like, which you have probably been able to guess has highly detailed illustrations and engravings and that sort of thing. But I do have this edition of Wuthering Heights that I found at a used bookstore when I visited Missoula, Montana, and I liked that the spine has some decent graphic design elements on it rather than being boring, which some vintage editions can be. And I have read through this edition, at least some of it, and the inscription in this one says to Betty from Helen, December 25th, 1934, which is actually better than I thought it was. I thought this edition from, was from the 80s, but it's from at least the 30s or earlier. This is the Universal Library edition by Grosset and Dunlap. And flipping through it, there's a <laughs> a really old library card thing from May 31st, 1967 from some high school and the name of the student is Harris. And then there is a, an absence excuse form for Souderton area joint school system in Pennsylvania. So that's how far this book has traveled because I'm in the Pacific Northwest and I've never been to Pennsylvania. So that's really cool. Maybe that was their bookmark and they didn't end up finishing the book because it's that far through. So that's the remainder of the copies of the Bronte's works that I own. There are a few other items. Like Jane Austen, there are adaptations and different viewpoints, etc. of the Bronte's works, and one of those that I own is Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. I think I got this within the last year or so, and I definitely look forward to it. And if you're not familiar, basically it is the story of Bertha, who's a character in Jane Eyre. In the biography of the Brontes that I read, Elizabeth Gaskell is a prominent feature of the book, and it's kind of interesting because she's mentioned a ton throughout the book, but she doesn't actually come into Charlotte Bronte's life until towards the end of it, pretty much. So it was really weird to hear, this is what Mrs. Gaskell thought about this and about this and her reaction to this, and then she wasn't even there for it. <laughs> 
until later and it's all what she heard from people and gossip and she wrote the earliest biography of Charlotte Bronte and it has since been come to light that it's wildly inaccurate and gossipy and creates this stereotype of the family and the individual members of the family that is inaccurate. Anyways, I haven't read any of Elizabeth Gaskell's works but she is also a well-known author. But I do own this edition of North and South, which is a very recent acquisition of mine that I ordered because I was buying something else online and wanted free shipping. So I just found a cheap copy of a book that I wanted. So I got Elizabeth Gaskell. So it's not connected really to the Brontes in any way other than it's Mrs. Gaskell friend and biographer of Charlotte Bronte. And one little extra I have that relates to the Brontes is this, actually it's a greeting card that I've instead framed and it says, whatever souls are made of, yours and mine are the same. Emily Bronte, which of course is a quote from Wuthering Heights, and it's one of my favorites. And the last little thing before I get to the biography is the t-shirt that I'm wearing, which naturally comes from outofprint.com like my Jane Austen ones did. So it is of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and it has what I'm guessing is Thornfield Hall on the front with Jane Eyre and Mr. Rochester and his horse. I currently am using this shirt as my pajamas shirt because it's great to wear in the summer. So I don't think I have missed anything. It's not as extensive as my Austin collection because all three sisters essentially approximately had the same output as Jane Austen did on her own. So that brings me to The Brontes by Juliet Barker. I've mentioned before that this specific edition of the book appears in Gilmore Girls when Rory is reading it in their living room and I came across it at a library book sale and I had to buy it of course even though I think I already had an updated version as an ebook but I wanted this one because it was on Gilmore Girls <laughs> and it took me a couple months to get through. The beginning started off very slow because it focuses solely on Patrick Bronte, their father, and it focuses on his education and his career and getting into his career and all the letters he wrote and the people he worked with and it just goes on and on. Like, I can understand the importance for including it for context, but the level of detail that it goes into, it's like the author included every available fact and letter and detail about Patrick Bronte's early life. And I mean, I get it, he's a Bronte and it's called The Brontes, but it just was boring, frankly, and I skimmed through a lot of it after a certain point. And then finally, when it actually gets to the births of the Bronte children and their early education and their early writings, it became more interesting. Although, when it does get into their early writings, it gets into a lot of the plots of their early writings and how it changes this way and that way and how this sibling made it go this way and this sibling made it go this way and just a lot of detail that again I felt was unnecessary. But then once it gets into the Brontes own careers and you can start to see the elements of their lives that influenced their books and then it gets into the writing of their books and the publishing and then their health and their eventual deaths. It was much more interesting and captivating and I just loved it. At some point points I did feel like I was reading a novel with characters because it was so enthralling learning about their lives. But then after Charlotte is the only sibling living, it goes into her everyday social life with authors, with her newfound fame, and like every social outing she has, and drama here and drama there, that in the end, again, I think was just way too detailed. 
and not quite to the extent as Patrick's career and their early writings, but enough that it was just starting to drag on again. And then finally she gets married and dies. <laughs> Then at that point it goes into the biography writing and the misconstruing of the lives of Patrick and Branwell and the personalities of the sisters and how the stereotypes about them came to light because aforementioned Elizabeth Gaskell, what I found surprising, not having much knowledge about it, was that she didn't really talk to Patrick and Arthur Bell Nichols, who was Charlotte's husband, to gain information about Charlotte and her life. And instead she talked to friends and acquaintances who dramatized, dramatized, wow, dramatized events. And it was just so interesting learning the truth based on all of this fact that is presented in this book. You can tell that Julia Barker has done her research and I read that she was actually like the head curator of the Bronte Museum for like 10 years. So she is an excellent choice to do the research and write this book. If I had one main critique to give about this book, if I were to do it differently myself, or how, you know, if someone else were to write this biography, I would have wished that instead of dwelling so long on Patrick's life in the beginning, I would have opened with something a little more directly related to Charlotte and Emily and Anne and Branwell and their lives and their amazing works that they've put out and then kind of go back and give a little more brief context of Patrick's life and career and then proceeded on and just made it a little bit more into a good story rather than just a timeline of all the facts about their lives. And I think it says more about the interesting parts of the siblings' lives that it is such a good story on its own and that I loved those parts that were actually about the Brontes. As I said in my review on Goodreads, eventually I realized that the intent of the author wasn't to write a good story altogether as a whole. It was to present the truth and the facts about this family, which in previous biographies was presented inaccurately. If you are interested in the Brontes and learning about their lives, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book unless you are incredibly interested and want to know all of the details. And if I went back before having read this book knowing what it would take to get through the book, I think I still would because I am a huge fan of the Brontes. But if you're just more kind of generally interested, maybe look into something else. But maybe not Elizabeth Gaskell's biography because it sounds pretty soap opera-y. <laughs> so those are my thoughts about the book. And as far as learning about the Brontes, I also mentioned in my Goodreads review that as I was reading it, I had the simultaneous feelings of having no idea what was going to happen next and feeling like I already knew their lives because I had not really realized how autobiographical especially Charlotte's works were and there are so many elements of her life that she incorporated into her novels and of Branwell's life as well into Jane Eyre. And as far as learning about their earlier writings, I did already have kind of a gist of what that was like because of the interlibrary loan I had earlier and I was really wanting their early works to be something more supernatural and apparently Emily and Anne's fantasy world that they wrote about was more supernatural and when I read Charlotte's part of their Angria tales. It really just read like it was set in England, even though it's supposedly set in Africa. And it was just kind of soap opera-y and nothing really supernatural. And I really enjoy the supernatural aspects of Wuthering Heights and of Jane Eyre. And there's this kind of ghost and haunting element in Wuthering Heights. And there's this like kind of mental telepathy between Jane and Rochester. And there's 
this moment where she sees Rochester's dog and thinks it's some kind of this mythical beast and I love that part so much and I really wanted to read their early works thinking that it would be even more imaginative and supernatural and anti-realistic and it wasn't. So it does make me really sad that more of Emily and Anne's writing doesn't exist of their fantasy world. There are some poems that exist, but when they're read on their own, they kind of just read like everyday gothic or Victorian poems, essentially. One really interesting thing about this book was that it seems like Emily had written or was writing a second book and then she fell ill and died but all evidence points to the fact that she had offered her second book to her publisher promised them that she would let them publish it but then most likely charlotte burned it when emily died because she judged it as not worthy of publication basically which makes me so angry <laughs> because I love Wuthering Heights so much and I would have loved to read another book by Emily. But instead I suppose I will have to live with just rereading Wuthering Heights for the rest of my life. I have read Wuthering Heights probably at least five times and every time I just find something new and I just marvel about all the symbolism and the circles and blah blah blah. <laughs> I should probably just end it there or else I'm going to continue rambling on about my love for Wuthering Heights and the Brontes for the next half an hour. So those are my many varied thoughts about the biography of the Brontes and the Brontes lives and of course my Bronte collection. If you have made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. and. I hope you join me in 2018 for rereading Wuthering Heights. So, thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you next time. Bye.